This is Production Music Live with another tutorial. This time we are going to try to make a, a remake of Coyote Kisses Revive. And we have this section on our website where you can give us some feedback and ask and suggest some tracks for tutorials or for remakes. And well, we can't do all of them, but if like many people ask for something, we try to do it. And also if we if there's a suggestion that's really interesting to us as well, then we do it as well. And this track actually was one of those really interesting suggestions because we had never done that before and I found it quite challenging to, to do it. I put the original track over here on this audio track and we can quickly listen in a little bit. There's a lot of vocal processing going on here and that's that's a big challenge for the remake because we don't have the original vocals we need to somehow figure out how to redo them how to rebuild them more or less and also we got another problem because in the drop over here they're actually singing something and we would have you would need that recording so let's listen in <laughs> Yeah, so we don't have that recording, so we need to try to um, make something out of vocal cuts, vocal shots, and, and make it sound quite that way, although not exactly the same. Anyways, let's go let's go back to the front of the of the song and, and listen in here. So if we only focus on vocals for now, we have this reverse shouting over here. And let's let's check a little bit our project here. Ah yeah, maybe I can explain the general structure. So on top over here, I have uh, the original track. In this group, I, I put all the drum samples, all the drumming information. There's quite a bit of drum information in that track. And um, in this group I have different kinds of bass sounds because in this original track they have also quite different kinds of bass. There's a little bit sine waves here and there's later the, those typical trap basses and some other basses here. So they're grouped into this group to have a little more organized. And in this group over here, I'm, I'm collecting all the vocal cuts and, and shouts and all this kind of stuff. It's mostly, it's mostly audio samples. But not only, we also uh, use synths sometimes. And over here, there's some additional vocal stuff. Over here, I have those fat saw leads for the drops and the second drop. And in this group I have the pads. You see there are some pad sounds every once in a while. Yeah, I'm closing those for now and we, we go back to the initial starting point of the song and, and see what we can do over here. That's the original song over here and we noticed, as we said, we noticed a shout, a reverse shouter over here and it comes back over here and here and there. Um, let's quickly check that again. I'm only playing this original file right now, so don't worry about that down there. <laughs> Oh 
Okay, so I was looking for, for this kind of reverse shouter and I think I was, for most of those vocal samples, I was looking in Vengeance Vocal Essentials 2 in this pack over here. Um, and I went to the section shots and for example one one of those shots is this one vocal shot 15 uh, uh. it doesn't sound very spectacular but it's very helpful uh, uh. this kind of vocal is very helpful already because you can make a lot out of this and um, anyways let's let's listen into this frozen shouter over here So you see it's a reversed sample. I've pitched it down to have it in the chord, in the key. And I put up the EQ8 of our equalizers over here. I cut out some lower frequencies and I emphasized a little bit on the higher frequencies. And I also put up a simple delay over here with four to six feedback 37 and dry wet 31 and also I put up a send effect over here which is the long reverb activated over this uh, return channel warm long reverb that's how we get the sound it's very accurate already not completely the same but hey we're trying to we are trying to remake the structure and and the basic concepts we are not trying to have a perfect frequency wise in every frequency for perfect match because that really takes a while and we are trying to keep our time budget a little efficient over here um, well, later we noticed that coyote kisses in their original version they're not playing it all that long all the time they're sometimes they're playing it shorter and sometimes a little earlier sometimes a little later so how do you figure that kind of stuff out for me it's easier to do that at a slower pace so if i really want to know where's that stuff sitting I'm, I'm going down to 110 or something over here instead of 170 actually not there but I kind of liked it over there but over here you will notice there's another shouter reversed so much for the shouters let's go to those really short ones over here and let's keep the original tempo tempo very low at 110 for the moment. So I got that over here. I think I'm using one of those samples, not of the premium, but one of those vocal. I don't do you can take almost any sample of those and then use the equalizers for your purposes. So I, I took one of those vocal cuts well, if you place it here, it will look like this more or less. Let's go a little bit over here. And, well, if they're too long, just cut out a little bit of those parts and then place them here. But you see, if I cut out this part, we could be using something like this. Now uh, we get fairly close to this sound we want to use over here. So that's basically what I did. Um, I called this Vox Cut over here. And now, let me quickly turn off the effect chain, which is pretty long over here, and play it out just the way it is. There's also a send effect on top over here, if I take that send effect down. You can see over here, I, I'm pretty sure I just warped it. 
it was too short and I just warped it longer by you know you know how you warp something um, for example if we want to make this one over here longer you can go in here into this view and um, you know kind of we have one of those locators already there we are in the warp mode we can go ahead put in another one and drag it longer so that's how you warp it longer manually at some point it will sound pretty bad but until then you can try to make samples longer but I'm going back now I'm already satisfied with it so let's first check the positioning if the positioning is okay over here so let me play the original together with uh, the one I just placed in here and we play it really slow to have it easier to, to, to really notice where they sit. So the positioning of the first one over here seems to be quite alright already. So um, let's have a look at the effects because the effects are not really there at the moment. Um, let's go back and put up the the send effect for the long reverb over here. So a little bit more interesting that way and now put on the effect chain. What is happening? Uh, over here in the first EQ8 which you are getting from your all effects um, we cut out basically everything below um, you know 700 Hertz more or less we do that in mid side mode over here there's no real reason to do that in mid side mode now but I think I started something different earlier so those EQ settings over here they also reflect my work style from time to time so sometimes I start with something and then I do something different and I don't change everything back so we cut out some of the lower frequencies over here and we do the same thing a little more over here and then we try to emphasize a little bit in between 1k and 2, 3, 4k and then we are trying to achieve a little emphasis on, on the letter E. So we have those very useful settings here where you can go into the EQ8 and they have singing A, singing C, singing E If you put up singing E, it will select all those um, frequencies from the frequency range where that note E is um, sitting. Because every every note has a specific frequency in the frequency range in any octave, and, and those would be the E notes over here. There's also the vocal E preset, which does that. And now you can see the vocal E is the one I used over here, but then I decided to open it up a little bit in the higher frequencies. I didn't use it that way, but I did something more or less like this with the fourth knob to have it a little more open. Um, if we just go back and use, um, like put this off and listen in. It's a little nasty. Uh, in in the resonances over here I didn't like it too much so if we compare that kind of preferred it that way and um, so that's a pretty cool way of like getting artificial words or artificial notes into something that doesn't really have some notes on top of that um, there's a chorus effect there's a phaser and this sidechain is not being used at the moment and then we have some delays so let's not too much phasing Just try to figure out how much you like yourself and then also um, 
simple delay behind everything, 4 to 6, quite open. And you see there it goes. So that's basically the first the first vocal cut element over here, chopped. Well the second one is is basically a copy of that one. And I just didn't use the vocal E setting over here, but I used the vocal A. And I open it up as well a little bit. And I'm using exactly the same effects behind stuff so if we put this in as well and then it repeats over here we get this reverse shouter from before And there's another one over here, uh, Scratchy. I call it Scratchy because it kind of sounds like a scratch effect or something. Let's, um, let's look into this. If we listen back to the part in the original track, If you notice it but I I hear some kind of vocal scratchy thing over here so what did I do um, I was looking for another shout vocal in the in the samples over here in the in the vengeance samples I guess and um, I also used one of those uh, vocal A EQs over here and basically the EQ form looks the same for all of them because well kind of we are trying to get them into the same frequency ranges and then they and make them not sound so different from each other. There's also a chorus here, there's also phasing, there's also a compressor not being used that one was just copied through and um, a lot of um, delay on that one. And uh, this one is not transposed. This one is transposed plus four, plus five, plus two. So that's how we get this scratchy kind of effect. We are pitching up the vocal sample. And this one is reversed. So it's like, if you if you're holding your hand on a on a vinyl record and you're playing it on your turntable and you're moving it forward and backward, something will we are going forward, forward, backward, forward. So that's the scratchy thing over here. That's basically you can do the same thing effect achieve the same effect if you like reverse one of those vocal samples here. And the faster you move with your hand on the vinyl record on the turntable, um, the higher you have to pitch your sample up. So I pitched it up five notes and you get the scratchy effect. Looks kind of technical over here, but it's really, it's really just the movement of the hand in reality on your turntable. And a lot of delay behind it. So um, what else do we have? Um, those are all the vocal samples now in for this part. And I'll try to, uh, there's something more in the original song and I try to make that with a synth. I, in this case I used Massive, but you can use any synth to, to get there. Anyways, let's see what we want to do. trying to make this melodic thing voice
So it's not exactly the same sound, I know, but uh, we, are, we are getting more or less uh, into the same direction with it. I'm using a, a saw wave over here, a talk wave table over here, and a little more saw, a little white noise, band reject filter, and a low pass filter as well. And I think the voicing is unisono, yeah. One voice, mono rotate, it's um, on mono because you could put up the glider as well. You put up the glider. Sounds kind of cool with the gliding effect over here. Uh, EQ8 cuts out some lower and um, we have a sidechain compressor over here picking up the sidechain. Well, not yet, basically. It starts sidechain information starts here in the verse, so in the intro section we don't use it. And also we have the singing A uh, EQ from the audio effects again, which is a singing A just dragged in there. Ah, but I took those lower ones down. And uh, flanger. There's a flanger over here. Flanging around a little bit, a little bit of ping pong delay as well. Chorus and reverb. Longer decay time for the reverb, 4. Uh, one five seconds and dry wet up quite a bit to have it layered a little bit on top but also in the in the back let's go back to the initial speed of 170 which is actually 85 and um, okay let's see how we get to through the section now Effect uh, sounds quite interesting. I'm going to show that quickly because it's here in the back. Uh, it's a sweeper. That's a very very simple effect. Um, I'm, I'm putting in uh, those midis. I'm getting sign, simple sign, and it's being controlled by this envelope, and we are pitching it. We are just pitching it down from plus uh, 64 semitones uh, down to zero. And that's where you're getting this pitchy uh, feel. If we were to uh, turn this off over here, the effect is gone. So this envelope controls the oscillator over here and tells the oscillator to re-pitch down the sound. And that's how we get this effect. We have another song with this template on our channel over here and, and we are playing different melodies and different notes and uh, you can get the template on our website and there's also a link over here and all those sounds in here will be part of that template. But also if you're not an Ableton, Ableton user and you're trying to get closer to this sound, we are going to make a massive pack with those trappy kind of sounds but we are still like working on more presets. So this is uh, vocals in the first section over here, additional vocal play arounds with uh, synthesizers and um, a little effect over here. The drums is nothing fancy for now, we have a clap percussive sound with a reverb on top and a delay. Uh, 
and this weird percussive sound. All the drum sounds are out of our Deep Premium Volume 1 sample pack. For example, that one, Perk Dry 16, uh, can be found in the percussive elements over here. It's that sound and a little bit of processing. And um, this tom sound. And the pad sounds over here, they are uh, made by Massive, achieved with Massive. And um, for example, this one, we, are, we have three layers over here. How, what are we doing over here? We are basically having a saw square, another saw square and another saw square which is uh, not ampli amplified over here so we can ignore it and um, also we are putting a little bit of the LFO with this rate into those oscillators to have it pitching up and down a little bit and, and adding this crooked kind of feel and we are also playing around a little bit with the vibrato over here And to push it a little more to the side, I have the um, EQ8 on mid-side mode over here. And the middle gets a little more low cut and the side gets a little less. So we are putting more information from the signal into the side. So that's the one for white pad sound. That's the one for emphasis on the middle, on the mid frequencies and low mid frequencies. And this one is the one uh, for the high frequencies. And uh, let's go to the verse over here. So the middle pad looks like this also saw square well also a little bit of LFO pitching here and nothing really fancy it's just a very simple sound and we put a filter over here on top we could do that as well inside of the synth but you know sometimes the workflow helps um, with Ableton plugins and then you're faster that way That filters a little more open. The sound is basically the same thing. Again, completely on saw, saw, and um, noise down. Interesting as well is this kind of blippy sound over here. Um, we have uh, those notes. How do we get there? Um, we are using one of our tropical house presets from our tropical massive pack and we are taking square wave, we are taking a flender, uh, second one and we're taking some bright noise on top and we also put a little bit of pitching into the flenders here to have this pitchy, clicky feel on top of the sound. Now if we go back to those vocals, they're a little different over here. We also add in quite some drum sounds already. So um, let me close this a little bit and um, not focus on the drumming now, but have a look at the vocals again. So 
So you see the reversed vocal is again a part of this part. Actually, it's part of the entire song, as you can see, it's always there. Over here we have this kind of shouty pitch down thing. What's that? I put this um, shouter, I turned this one around, reversed it to have it start from, from the beginning. And then we just automate the transposition over here and pitch it down that way, like a tape stop effect. We put it into a simpler, apply C3 as note, and then we pitch it down with the transposition over here. You can see it in a frequency range nicely. So we get the start pitching kind of shout sound. What else is there? So that's just what we have in the original, and we're just trying to use outs again. Blue, I, I, ba, ba. Yeah, that was not too bad. You can use that one, for example. And then just cut them in here, place them in here, and cut them together with this um, going down in the tempo approach, for example. So that's what you get, and then you just... In that case, I just pitch down every single one of those and then I group them together with uh, Consolidate over here and made one longer sample out of it. And there's a little bit of reverb on top and a little bit of delay. Over here you can still see um, more of the process which is this one is not consolidated yet but it's basically exactly what I did over here let's see that one so it's beats no transposition it's uh, beats no transposition and it's beats no transposition so they have already been um, consolidated one time and so you don't see the transposition actually they're going ba 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 so they're going down in the in the pitch and notice as well I'm, I'm playing around a little bit with the left right panorama over here so ba da bam and then the next one goes on the right and goes ba And also, there's already the next quicker choppy effect starting. So I think you're getting the concept over here. It's basically because we are trying to rebuild exactly what they are doing in their Coyote Kisses track. Um, we kind of have to try to do it like this first because we really want to place those samples where they appear in their track. And you see, it's not too mathematical actually. They're not really going there always on one and one three on one four. But sometimes they're early, some sometimes they're a little late, so it's really it's really like that's what makes this thing kind of groovy. Um, also over here you can see those choppy effects, they are really placed with a, a little bit of creativity here. And you see on that one, for example, I'm also applying a little bit of auto panning. So I'm, I'm, I'm using this auto panning effect from uh, here. And um, I'm having it move around quite a bit. And you can notice how it's going from left to right, from your left to your right ear. If you're on headphones, for example, that would be really helpful now. But also if you have speakers in front of you and left is far enough away from right, so 
you should be able to hear this perfectly. In the additional group over here, we are we are again using synths to um, give the impression of a vocal, but it's really it's really not that fancy over here. It's again a massive um, with a saw wave, auto filter, EQ, EQ, EQ. I don't know. That looks like workflow over here. Decision making came later, and singing A again, and then in the end I cut out everything below one one point three k, and there's also a flanger over here. Are we playing? Actually, we are playing um, those notes. So, I don't know, it kind of sounds, if with a little bit of imagination, it sounds like a computer voice or something. And if you have a lot of layers in front of that, you don't really know if it's a vocal sample or a synthesizer. And then there's this other sound effect over here. It's also achieved by Massive and it's basically chopping. So now if we play them all together and have a look at them all together as well, we can uh, well, we can see it's quite quite a bit of work, but you're getting there with the effect that you want it. I think that those are the most important parts of the vocal chopping over here and I think I'm going to end this vocal chopping tutorial over here because now the logic remains the same for the end of the song. I just uh, do a little bit more over here and a little more over there and sometimes I put it on the left side of the panorama and the one that's answering in the song is on the right side of the panorama. So. Um, that's you already saw that and we can quickly go through this drop part over here I think the drop was a little loud in the saw waves Those um, vocal chops over here, I was actually trying to replicate the part where they're actually singing in the original song, and that's it's really doesn't really make a lot of sense, but you get a little bit of what they're doing there. <laughs> And, and there's also maybe over here, that's quite interesting. You can also look for those hey ho kind of samples and, and just plug them in there because they also have that in the original. It's always adding drive to your beats. Yeah, so. Let's quickly uh, wrap this up over here. That's um, the vocal chop cutting tutorial for, for this track, for this underlying original track. Um, I think they did a really, really cool job over here. It's a really interesting and creative song. It's so inspiring. Um, I'm going to do a couple of more tutorials on this song. In another one I would focus more on the drum part and another one will focus on the bass and also a little bit on the instruments. 
check the description for for those other tutorials and uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Subscribe to our channel. Check the description for stuff we are giving um, away for free and for stuff we are selling on our website. For example, a template like that one. And uh, I hope to see you next time.